Hello and welcome to Spur Economics. In this video, we will discuss the weighted least squares method as a solution to the problem of heteroscedasticity. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you like our content. You can visit the Spur Economics website for even more knowledge on econometrics, link is in the description. The weighted least squares or WLS method is a special form of generalized least squares estimation. It can be applied in a situation of heteroscedasticity. We know that the variance of residuals is non-constant under heteroscedasticity and OLS requires the residual variance to be constant. In WLS, the original OLS model is transformed using weights in a way that the variance of residuals becomes constant. Hence, the problem of heteroscedasticity is removed by transforming the model by weighting the observations based on their residual variance. For a meaningful transformation, it is necessary to understand the type or pattern of heteroscedasticity. The pattern is shown by the relationship between the variance of residuals and variables in the model. Based on that relationship, we can decide the weights and transform the original model. Let us consider a simple model with dependent variable y and one independent variable x as shown here. Suppose that we detect heteroscedasticity in this model and somehow we know the exact pattern of heteroscedasticity. For illustration, let us consider the relationship between the residual variance and the independent variable x as shown here. The squared residuals are a function of the independent variable x and they are positively related. That is, as x increases, the residual variance or squared residuals will increase. As a result, variance of residuals will not be constant. In such a situation, we can transform the original OLS model using the weights based on the pattern of relationship where we know that the variance of residuals is a function of x squared as shown earlier. There are two ways that we can understand the WLS from here. First, we can transform all the variables in the model by 1 upon under root x squared. This will simply be 1 upon x. Therefore, 1 upon x are the weights for transforming all the parameters and variables in the model. The second way to look at this is through minimizing the sum of squares. In OLS, we minimize the residual sum of squares to estimate the parameters. However, in WLS, we minimize the weighted residual sum of squares. In other words, weights multiplied by the residual sum of squares or squared residuals are minimized. In this specification, the weights will be equal to 1 upon x squared. WLS will minimize 1 upon x squared multiplied by squared residuals. It is important to note here that both these specifications are equivalent. The only difference is in the way that they are expressed. If we are transforming all the variables before estimation, then we express the weights as 1 upon x. This is automatically equivalent to minimizing weighted sum of squares shown by our second specification, that is, 1 upon x squared multiplied by squared residuals. These expressions look different but are inherently the same and lead to the same results. In the previous section, we discussed how to transform the model using weights. However, we assumed the pattern of heteroscedasticity to be known. In practice, it is not possible to know the exact pattern beforehand. Therefore, we must figure out the pattern of relationship between the residual variance and the variables. This is necessary because the weights in WLS are based on this pattern. If we choose incorrect weights, the results will end up biased and unreliable. There are several ways to determine the pattern of heteroscedasticity and the weights for WLS. Here, we will discuss two commonly used methods for this purpose. Let us take a look at the first method of determining the weights. In step 1, we simply estimate the original OLS model and obtain the residuals. These residuals will be heterosedastic in nature and related to the variables in the model. In step 2, we first take the square of these residuals or estimate the squared residuals. 
Then, we take the natural logarithm of the squared residuals as shown here. We run an auxiliary regression in the step 3 with log of squared residual as the dependent variable. The independent variables will be the independent variables from the original OLS model estimated in step 1. In step 4, we obtain the fitted values of the auxiliary regression. These will be the predicted values of the log of squared residuals. To reverse the log, we have to take the exponent of the fitted values as shown here. Finally, in step 5, we decide the weights based on the fitted values. The weights for WLS will be equal to 1 upon W. When we are estimating the WLS model in reality using software programs, we must be careful. Different software programs can take a different approach to specifying the weights in their commands. We discussed the two specifications of WLS earlier and we should check which one the software uses. If the software asks to specify the weights based on minimizing the weighted sum of squares, then our weights will stay the same as 1 upon W. However, if the software or you transform the original variables before estimation, then the weights will be 1 upon under root W. Now, let us move on to the second method of determining the weights for WLS. The step 1 stays the same where we estimate the original OLS model and obtain the residuals. Again, these residuals will be heterosedastic in nature. In step 2, we take the absolute value of these residuals. This is different from the previous approach, where we squared the residuals and used natural log. The auxiliary regression in step 3 will also be different. The absolute value of residuals will be the dependent variable here. The independent variable will also be different. In the previous method, we used the independent variables from the original OLS model. However in this method, the independent variable will be the fitted values or predicted values from the original OLS model from step 1. In step 4, we obtain the fitted values from the auxiliary regression, that is, we predict the absolute residuals. Finally, in step 5, we decide the weights based on step 4. The weights will be equal to 1 upon the square of fitted values or predicted absolute residuals. Again, we have to be careful in practice when we use software programs. If the software asks to specify the weights for minimizing the squared residuals, then the weights will stay the same and will be equal to 1 upon the square of predicted absolute residuals. On the other hand, if the software or you transform the original variables before estimation, then weights will simply be 1 divided by the predicted absolute residuals. To avoid confusion, let us look at why we use different weights when transforming variables as compared to when we are minimizing weighted sum of squares. We will illustrate how both the specifications are inherently the same. When we transformed all the variables in the model before estimation, we used 1 divided by predicted absolute residuals. Then, the transformed model will look like the one shown here. As we can see, all the variables, parameters and even the error term is divided by these weights. The squared residuals from this new error term will be equal to mu i squared divided by the square of predicted absolute residuals. Since we minimize the weighted sum of squares, the weights now end up being 1 divided by the square of absolute predicted residuals. And, this is exactly what we specify when the software asks for weights based on minimizing the weighted sum of squares. Both the specifications mean the same, only the expression is different. Hence, we should be careful what the software is asking for. For more content on WLS, econometrics and economics, take a look at the links in the description. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button, share and subscribe if you like the video.